Oh, Sayo. Oh, Sayo. Wonderful. Cherokee greeting. We are in April, and April is designated as Earth Month. And also, this week, in you know, two or three days, is also given as Earth Day. And on the occasion of that, last night we also watched on the website the um, Apollo mission to the moon in 1968 there and so it sent back for the first time pictures photographs and so forth of what the earth looked like from the moon which they often were describing as a blue marble in the black vastness you know of the universe um, and that kind of thing and they had you know what it looks like to see an earth rising over the horizon of the moon and all that and so um, that's my theme this is very spontaneous and Tim Britton puts these uh, coyote talks up on his website and he is the master astrologer and especially for us and he's given to me among all the astrology that I am very very much a part of the earth <coughs> a lot of earth signs so I think I better say something about it <laughs> and all <of> that. <clears throat> My main theme here is actually to focus on the earth as our indigenous or native cultures have conceived of the earth. And I'm trying to kind of distinguish that from other ideas or portrayals of, you know, uh, earth woman uh, and so forth. So I'm really trying to focus this on the earth and how our cultures had conceived and thought of this and how that they interacted with it. So that's the main idea that I have here for this subject, you know, Earth. And I'll bring you different ideas in here in my display. But chiefly right here, this is a painting and this is done by Claudia Poqua and she's who it is that's behind the camera focusing her camera on her painting and I see it as you know a very straightforward succinct uh, portrayal <clears throat> in this theme of earth earth as um, well I can see you can you can see that <clears throat> and then I would like to follow that with uh, in Cherokee to give you an idea <clears throat> Yeah, I'm of, a, of a Cherokee education and ancestry. So this is the Cherokee uh, way of relating to Earth in our place that was um, originally where the Cherokee homeland was uh, back east from here. Uh, Elohi is the Cherokee name meaning for the Earth, but you know, like the red Earth, that kind of thing, or personified. Uh, Elohina, you know, like, it would be more like saying Mother Earth. <clears throat> and this is going to be uh, places, places there in uh, the Cherokee homeland. Uh, to give you an idea of the way that we would orientate ourselves to our country. This is places. So that's going to be, you know, a list like that. Great salted standing water where the sun shines out at the bushy place at the place of mud first and oldest planted ground the dancing place at the pine spring a long straight river a meadow bull thistle tide water covered with froth the place where clams are found, the sprucy stream, at the sweating place, at the sweet land, the place of fear, the place where deer are shy. Here's the place to live. Sigit wani. Uh huh. Following along with the 
steam here in, in Cherokee. Um, I've met, said before that the crystal, these crystals are practically, I think, ubiquitous. <laughs> it was the first thing in my education. I think LME was the first word in the introduction into um, the culture of crystals there. Eluncy. Eluncy is crystal in Cherokee. And the Cherokee uh, crystals were everything, little tiny crystals to giant crystals and so forth. <clears throat> so if you kind of look here, that's what I'm going to be looking at here. Let me give a little light on that. And so all this that I made. <clears throat> This is um, this crystal is the stone of porphyry, porphyry, meaning the guardian stone, and uh, it, it it's it's like a, a lodestone. Uh, I was Claudia and I had studied Aikido there in Berkeley under um, uh, oh I forgot his name the, the, the master, but anyway he he said that. Uh, the, the earth is is that the earth is the lodestone, so everything of the gravity is what governed uh, Master Yoshiba, governed the uh, Aikido, <laughs> like that, and he even showed you know that men, if he fastens himself to, to the lodestone of the earth, strong men could not lift him off the ground. Anyway, you get the idea about that. So the stone of porphyry is the earth's crystal core, which is encoded within the planet's memory blanks, and as the chamber at the Earth's crystal core. Um, it also means the release of energy through creative acts of ritual and mystic attainment, and the power to which such acts of attainment give rise. Power of poetry, dance, music, it is the same power that animates the rainbows. And intuiting that the earth itself is crystalline in nature. All this is under this stone of porphyry. <clears throat> and somehow we have the image of the earth as a crystal. Elunsuti, the giant crystal. So you can see how that in Cherokee uh, the earth is conceived by way of this crystal and the guardianship of it is this aura around the earth that Tim Britton had told us last night is the gravity field that's that's our protector translated in Cherokee is the crystal lodestone so, so that's something that's very different in that way <clears throat> Now let me show you this figure down here. This figure comes from the Mideast, Canaan, uh, something like 7,000 years ago. Um, and it's very interesting because you see that it's put together in somewhat of a, a female shape with uh, different parts like that. The meaning in the ancient uh, woman's culture was that she is a unity of parts. This very much differed from the later takeover of the Mediterranean by the uh, masculine or uh, patriarchy. The, um, I call it the Mediterranean Sea itself in the great uh, woman's culture was her uterus, was her uterus. And or Canaan is, the, uh, that that was actually where she rested within it. <clears throat> uh, Kenanani, I think it was its original name. So, and in Mexico, figures like this continued to be made, even recently, because I have come across them in Mexico. <clears throat> so, another indication, either we want to say, our conceptions of the earth, mother, or anything like that are universal or we do have cultural sources one is the Mediterranean for that so that's you know, very important of course looking down here at this clay turtle this is actually from Southeast Asia um, places where the turtle 
or tortoise is figured. And of course, the turtle or tortoise is a very apt image for the Earth. And here in Native America, we even call um, <clears throat> North America, the continent, as Turtle Island. So you can see that kind of thing. <clears throat> now I want to refer to over here, this figure here. The back country of San Diego, that is, that's east of San Diego, that goes all the way back to the, I think we would call the settlement or little town, uh, Yacumbe. <clears throat> the Mexican side is called Yacumbe. Uh, it means, you know, something to the effect of a place of the wild gourd. Uh, there was also hot springs there. And until, you know, somewhat recent years, there was a hotel there that sort of ex exploited, capitalized on the hot springs there. So the native name would be, you know, the Pala Atingba meaning that's the place where the hot water is. <clears throat> and that was an ancient place. So Yakumba, and then you go out a few miles to it, drops off deeply down into Ocotillo. And out there on the edge, they built a tower, really a long time ago, and they're, they're calling that Incopa, <clears throat> as if that is a native name. Now the people and the language we are associating this back country with are called in the American Kawia. <clears throat> it's an American name for the Muluwitam, the original people. And that's where a lot of my knowledge comes from here in this case. Like I said, it's, it's a watershed of a very ancient culture of the earth and of the feminine. And there are many things there that signify that. However, that region has been depopulated by uh, of any indigenous people <clears throat> by one means or another. <laughs> so there is nobody there to talk about it. But uh, that's where we're looking at. And out there, there is this figure, if you're pointing at this figure here. I've replicated this. Now this, I have it standing up. But actually, it's a stone, a very large stone, sort of somewhat reminiscent of a small Volkswagen bug. <laughs> and it's on a mound, and it's you know, curved over like that. <clears throat> and it's a very, very interesting looking rock. And right away, it reminded me of a trilobite, a giant trilo trilobite. <clears throat> and behind it, there is, you know, like a big huge loaf. It's actually a big boulder that's just sheer down and frames this this uh, rock. <coughs> Looks like I need water. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm out in the desert. I'm getting dry. <coughs> and so the what I've replicated here is actually uh, horizontal, we would say. And it's given the idea of how that it looks. It's kind of crystalline and it's kind of whitish. Now, the name for this is Nakwili. Now, Nakwili, uh, Nakwili it means uh, body louse. It's a body louse. And also, Nakwili will be a young woman's body. Because guys say, yeah, I'm going his body. <clears throat> now the concept we're trying to talk about here is how the Muruita conceived of this earth. Looking into the night sky, we see the stars. And these star, these stars were personified as body lice or nits. <laughs> and then that in turn was kind of translated back here to earth so that we could be the lice on her, on the earth. So the way to render that was to render her as this great white body louse, now really. So that's quite a, a concept there. Now from the same place, here is this image here, this from, from out there, uh, this is Nanguit. This is a image, it's what it literally means, 
this is an image of her. And I've done a big painting of her where I would tell you more of what the features are. But here I'm showing a different kind of concepts. <clears throat> the people living out there, judging by the language, have stemmed from Libya a long time ago. And so that's very interesting that these people have come particularly to settle up here. It's, it's east, east of here. It's a very high place. You can look over to, to Mexico <clears throat> and you look down into this deep sink where the Salton Sea is. <clears throat> and that Salton Sea was also the place of um, a mussel, a certain mussel that was found also in North Africa. So that's a, a connection there. But here it's really emphasizing this. And then this little pot here, um, this is probably, most likely, from Peru. And I'm showing that because of certainly the ideas or concept of pots or cooking pots or bean pots with the earth was very prevalent wherever uh, people made pottery, which almost always were women. And this also looks very similar to pottery made like this in Arizona by the people we call Pima, the Odom, and uh, who, but judging by their language, have also stemmed from the Mediterranean. So that's a feature there. And to go with that, I have this uh, bean pot here. This bean pot, this one is uh, from south of the border there. And so it's easy to conceive of that as uh, earth an earthen pot like that. And here we can go over here. This is what we call a Navajo sand painting, and it is a sand painting of earth. <laughs> of earth. And the bar on the bottom means earth ground. And then here, you know, is the plant life. And here is, you know, the, the night sky. And all the way that um, this has been actually conceived and figured for Earth in Navajo. So again, uh, changing woman is like Earth woman. So we're distinguishing just as much as we can from the Earth as planet and the deities like Earth goddess. Now over here, <clears throat> this is also from out there, Yakumba, that little figure there. This is Timawit. Now, Timawea would be rendered like Earth God. <clears throat> he is the being that goes into the Earth and gives the Earth shape, you know. And his saying is, Quilly, Quilly, Dominica, Mikanika, Quilly, Quilly, go into the ground. And he dug, 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 and he rolled, rolled, rolled. Quilly, Quilly, Dominica, Mikanika, go into the ground. And that way he made the hills, he made the shapes. Um, and the, all was left of him after he got in was his hair, and the hair was the grass. And so that's a, that little figure is there. Now, this little figure here, you can see is a duck, and I put this in also a clay pot. <clears throat> and we'll see how this figure is in this piece to show. Now, coyote figures, you know, um, Throughout, throughout Native America, throughout the Southwest, and everything, you know, the coyote has lots of uh, appearances, guises, and functions, you know, but certainly among them, he is something as a primordial creator. <clears throat> so I'm going to do this one. He was there, old man coyote, and it all got started. Water all over the earth, no animals. Coyote looked around, grabbed in it, and there was this little bird, a swallowtail. She's a good mud dabber, they say. Coyote said to her, go down, bring earth. She brought none. Then a crow, go down, get some mud. Crow brought none. Okay, wolf, now you bring it. He brought none. Coyote says, Nothing I can do. 
as he grabs the duck. A tail up is the duck under. Then duck gone. It's gone. Won't be back, I've had. But a duck up is a muddy mouth. Made this world here. Then mud people. Mud woman. Mud man. It was at that time with only that much mud. And that was how making got started. Afterward, there came a baby, such as a girl. Then she had brought a baby. <clears throat> now, it's a boy. So, as they always say again and again, more people came to be. And like when you get together, you make others. And so, I make it so, Coyote says. <laughs> So this is my offering and celebration for the month of the earth and the earth anyway. When I first went up in an airplane and I looked down at this earth, it was a genuine emotional experience. So maybe the astronauts looking at the blue marble in the black universe, maybe, maybe they could feel that. In the film they certainly said they were very happy to get back home. Thank you. Good.